Blessings TLC and welcome to today's broadcast. Um, this is incredible, the fact that we can actually continue to fellowship and continue to have the word, but from the safety of our own homes. Now, many of you might be wondering why on earth was service suspended? Was this a response to fear or, to, or panic? You know, why, why was service suspended? So just very briefly, just to explain that we know without any question there is a pandemic um, known as coronavirus. Now, whilst at the same time we know that we are covenant people and we know and are quite confident of our safety, as a matter of fact, the word I'll be bringing is centered around that safety. But at the same time, we also know that this is a serious situation and we wanted to make sure that we had all the information that we needed and we wanted to make sure that we had everything in place to guarantee everyone's safety, things like hand sanitizers, etc. We just wanted to make sure, because our priority, of course, is the health and safety of every member of the Transformation Life Centre. So, for your understanding and your cooperation, of course, the whole team, we are just very grateful for who you are. Now, uh, someone said to me, you know, so, you know, with this situation, you know, Pastor Michael, you brought a theme for the year, you brought a word, it is a word that resonated in everyone's spirit, it is the year of double portion, it is the year of divine overflow, it is the year of irreversible favour. Everybody resonated with this word. But some of you are beginning to wonder in the present climate and the present context, how can we as God people, God's people still claim that this is a year of double portion, that this is a year of irreversible favor? And I am so glad that you asked. You know, I'm going to share the word of God with you today. Um, just because we cannot meet up physically does not mean we cannot fellowship technology. God has blessed us with to uh, be able to enable us to continue um, to have fellowship and to continue to hear the word and have the word. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to the book of Exodus. Now, I am going to be um, looking at a couple of scriptures. So uh, really just make a note that it's Exodus 8, Exodus 9 and Exodus 10. Um, but the main one that I want you to turn to is Exodus 12. Um, and starting from verse 12. But before we go into Exodus 12, I just want to touch on some of the other scriptures. Now, I want to give you a, a backdrop to this. Um, the Bible tells us that the Lord uh, called Moses and, and spoke to Moses and, and said to Moses, listen, I want you to go and I want you to rescue my people. So if you, could, so if you have your Bibles, if you could turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 3. We're going to have ourselves a meal in God's Word. And we're going to have a look at how this whole coronavirus thing and this whole pandemic and this whole situation, how on earth this can in any way demonstrate or how this can apply to the year of double portion, the year of irreversible favor. And I'm gonna show you. So if you have your Bibles, just turn to Exodus chapter three, and we're gonna to begin to read from verse 19. This is after the Lord has appeared to Moses and said to him, Moses, are you ready for your calling? Are you ready for your life's destiny? Because now is the time. I've raised you for a time such as this, and I'm giving you a commission. I'm giving you an assignment, and I'm gonna send you. And of course, Moses has all these doubts. He has all these questions thinking, Lord, this is a, a superpower. Egypt is a superpower. Your people have been in slavery for over 400 years. How am I a nomad, a shepherd? How am I going to go and rescue the people? Lord, what you're saying seems impossible. And so the Lord uh, acknowledges to a certain degree um, his struggle. But this is what the Lord says to him. So Exodus chapter 3 from verse 19. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It may differ slightly from yours. Verse 19, it says, God is speaking. He says, but I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand forces him. I want you to take notice of that. I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand forces him. So I will raise my hand and strike the Egyptians, performing all kinds of miracles among them. Then at last he will let you go. And I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably on you. There's the irreversible favor that I was talking about. I will cause the Egyptians to look favorably on you. 
they will give you gifts when you go so you will not leave empty handed. In other words, what God was saying to them, all those years that you worked for them, all those 400 years that you were building their stuff, I am now going to cause them to give you double for your trouble. I am now going to cause them to give you divine compensation, divine PPI, a divine tax rebate on everything that they have robbed from you. I'm going to force them to have to pay you back. They're not going to pay you back because of a good conscience. They're not going to pay you back because they're nice people. They're going to pay you back because I am going to raise my hand and I am going to strike them and I'm going to make them pay you back. Somebody said, amen. Verse 22, every Israelite woman will ask for articles of silver and gold. You know how women love their jewelry and God acknowledges this. He says, ask the women to ask for silver and gold and find clothing from her Egyptian neighbors and from the foreign women in their houses. You will dress your sons and daughters with these stripping the Egyptians of their wealth. My goodness, I don't know about you, but I'm already excited in the word. I've got to try and calm down so I can get through this, but I already wish Jason was here so we could have a praise dance right now, okay? But here we go. So it, the, 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 the context and the backdrop of what I'm sharing with you is that basically the Lord said, okay, so the Egyptians, particularly Pharaoh, these were great kings. These were great civilizations. These guys were superpowers. I mean, they were superpowers in their time. And they had enslaved the Israelites. They had enslaved God's people. And although God's people were covenant people, although they were blessed people, they were still bound by slavery. Have you ever been there, child of God, where you are blessed but bound? You know that paradox, that dichotomy, that kind of uh, uh, um, uh, almost contradiction in your life where you know you are blessed, but you are bound. And the children of Israel were blessed, but they were bound by these powers, by superpowers. And Pharaoh represents not just powerful governments, Pharaoh also represents demonic oppression. But you know, Pharaoh became so comfortable oppressing God's people and looking at his fleet of chariots and looking at his soldiers and looking at his pyramids that he became so arrogant. And child of God, uh, you know, if we look at the times that we live in, I've got to be honest with you, people have become arrogant. Governments have become arrogant. Society has become arrogant. And Pharaoh got to the point that when Moses first approached him and says, God said, let my people go. He said, well, who is this God that I should listen to? I mean, such was the arrogance of this guy that he was saying, well, who is this God? Who is this God that I should even take any notice? And doesn't that just sound like society now? You know, society is so arrogant at the moment, you know, with their woke culture talking about a man can just be a woman if he wants to be a woman. What? What did you just say? Are you trying to tell me that a man can lactate and breastfeed? Can a man ever have a period and, and have a menstrual cycle and have children? Can a man do that? Well, of course a man can't be a woman. And then they're saying a woman can just be a man. You know, do, does she have testicles? Can she actually bear children? Of course she can't. Well, if she can't, then she'll never be a man. But we're living in an arrogant society that calls up, down, and down, up. And of course the scripture says in the end times, this is what will happen. People will call evil good and good evil and they will subvert and pervert the word of God. And so we are living in an arrogant society where they say, well, if you say anything, I mean, not only, do you not, not only have you got to agree with me, but if you actually dare to have a debate, if you dare to express your thoughts, we'll cancel you, we'll, we'll control you, we'll shut you down. And this is a very arrogant generation that will actually poke the bear. What do I mean by poking the bear? The bear is sleeping and they're poking the bear because the bear is sleeping. You know, the bear is in hibernation, so they're poking the bear. But how many of you know that you keep poking the bear, that bear is going to wake up and then what are you going to do when it wakes up? And so this is what Pharaoh was doing. He was poking the bear. He was provoking God. Very much like our present generation. But let me tell you something, child of God. I have in my pocket, and I want to show you this, I have a coin and this coin is a 10 pence piece. And on one side, the tails, it's got the, the, the lion, the sort of the symbol of Great Britain. But on the other side, it's got the, 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 the queen's head. And so we call it heads and tails. Now, if I went into a bank and I tried to exchange this for something and it was just heads, heads on both sides, they would say to me, I'm sorry, that's a counterfeit. It needs to be heads and tails. And it's the same with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, God is love. He is love. He loves each and every one of us. But if I only talk about the love of God, if I only talk about the love and the grace of God, I'm only giving you heads of the gospel, but I've got to give you the heads and the tails. And the tails is that, yes, the heads is that he's a loving God, but the tails is that he is a righteous judge. 
judge. He is a holy God and you cannot just provoke God and pervert his word and turn his word aside and decide I'm going to ban his word and, and actually there isn't male and, and female. You know, forget what the Bible says. We'll make up our own culture. We'll make up our own truth. As a matter of fact, it's called my truth. Not the truth, but my truth. Every now and again, when humanity provokes God, you go and read the Bible. The Bible will show you that God will do exactly what he said he will do. He will say, he says to Moses, Pharaoh's not going to listen to you unless he is forced to by my hand. So I will lift up my hand and I will strike him and I will cause him to, to have to listen and have to bend the knee to my word. And when I look at this situation with the present plagues, it reminds me of this season because how did God, how did God break Pharaoh? How did he break Egypt? He broke them with plagues. He sent plagues. He sent boils. He sent flies. He sent gnats. He sent darkness. He sent everything against them. And eventually they were like, listen, please take your people and go. Take the silver. Take the gold. Just go. Please leave. And I'm looking at the current climate and once again these people have poked the bear. They have provoked God and what I see is although he's a God of love and his hands are open to those who are running for cover can run into his arms but he's saying I will humble your hearts. I will humble you. How dare you put my word aside. How dare you pervert the things that I have put in place and you have provoked Provoked. This generation has provoked God into action because now with the coronavirus, all of a sudden, they're not talking about their truth and my truth and who's wearing stilettos and who's doing what. All of a sudden, they are having to, to bow the knee and humble their hearts to the fact that something has come along that they can't control. Something has come along that they can't talk their way around. Something has come around where the extreme left and the social justice warriors can't talk foolishness over corona because corona is now making its move and only those who are in a covenant with almighty God are going to survive this. I know there are people out there that just said amen to that. But Pastor Michael, I don't know if what you're saying is biblical. I mean, are you sure? Because what you're saying is a little bit edgy. Are you sure this is the word of God? Well, come with me to the word of God. Okay, as I said, I don't have time to read everything, but you must write down these scriptures and check it for yourself. In Exodus 8, verse 21 to 23, God says, I'm going to release flies. I'm going to release swarms, but not just flies that you get in summer buzzing around, but I'm going to release clouds and swarms of flies. And listen to what it says. In verse 21, if you refuse, then I will send swarms of flies on you, your officials, your people, and all the houses. The Egyptians' homes will be filled with flies and the ground will be covered with them. But... This time I will spare the region of Goshen where my people live. No flies will be found there. You see, in Egypt, there was a place called Goshen that was reserved for the people of God. It was where the slaves lived. And time and time again, during these plagues, the, uh, it, it, it was very clear. God said, I am going to make a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. I'm going to make a distinction between the world and my people. And so in Exodus 8, with the flies, God said very clear, there won't be any flies in Goshen and then in Exodus 9 again God began to speak to him and he says I'm gonna kill the livestock I'm gonna bring plagues on the livestock I'm gonna bring some kind of stuff on, but the livestock of the Israelites will not die okay and and in in Exodus 10 this one was so fascinating to me because God says I'm gonna bring a plague of darkness and the Bible says the darkness was so thick that you could feel it the Bible says that the darkness was so heavy and it was so thick that people couldn't see one another. It was that dark. But listen to what the Bible says. In verse 23, it says, During all that time, the people could not see each other and no one moved. But there was light as usual where the people of Israel lived. Are you catching this, children of God? And then finally, in Exodus 12, 12 and 13, if you have your Bibles, turn to it. Exodus 12, 12 and 13 says, On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and every firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. But 
The blood on your doorpost will serve as a sign marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Did you hear that? God was saying to them, yeah, I'm about to move. And yes, coronas are a reality. And yes, you can, you can name it whatever you want. You can call it SARS, mad cow. You can name it swine flu. Birth. It doesn't matter. The Bible says that when you poke the bear and when you provoke God, he has to show you who is God. And you realize that Boris Johnson is not God and Donald Trump is not God. And all those social justice warriors with mouthy people that feel they can intimidate people so that you can't even think your thoughts or you can't even express your thoughts. God says, I will humble all of you. And by the time I'm finished, the Bible says that God has given Jesus a name above every name that at his name, every knee will have to bow. Things in heaven, things on earth, and things beneath the earth. Every knee is going to have to bow to the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. A friend of mine thought he may have contracted the coronavirus, and so he phoned the emergency number. And you know what the first thing they said to him was? Please don't come in. Whatever you do, just stay where you are. Whatever you, in other words, the people that he's running to are running from him. <laughs> the Bible says, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Child of God, I just want to encourage you at this time. I know it seems like the world is panicking, but that's what plagues do. I know it seems like people losing hope, but that's not your portion. You are in Goshen. You are in a spiritual Goshen. And the Goshen that you are in is a fortified place. It's the secret place of the Most High God. And there shall no evil before you. A thousand shall fall at that time, ten thousand by your right hand, but it shall not, it shall not come nigh thy dwelling. Child of God, all I ask you to do is I ask you to make sure you are in a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. When God told Moses to make to kill a lamb and every home had to kill a lamb and take the blood of the lamb and smear it on the posts of the doors as a sign that when the death angel came, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. You got to make sure that your homes are covered with the blood of Jesus. You got to make sure that your children are covered with the blood of Jesus. You got to make sure that you're in a relationship with the lamb of God. And so that when the enemy comes, when Corona comes, when whatever it is comes, it will see the blood covenant. It will see the blood of Jesus and it will pass over you. You see, now is the time to stop talking because now is the time for action. Now is the time where we'll get to see who are the Israelites and who are the Egyptians because the Egyptians were running and diving for cover and rolling around in grief and in sorrow. But the people of God had their feet up. They had their feet up popping their popcorn and chilling out and waiting for God to open up the Red Sea. Let me tell you something, children of God. This is a time like no other in your life because you have walked and you have served and you have been like the children of Israel in bondage to governments, in bondage to systems. But this is the time where God is saying, let my people go. We will emerge from this situation victorious because the Lord God of Israel is on our side. Now I'm going to pray with you right now for those of you who are here and you're listening to this message and you, you, you just, you, you recognize that this isn't a time of grief and this isn't a time of, 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 of sorrow or fear or panic, but this is a time where you can really engage, hallelujah, with the protection of the covenant of God. I want you to join me in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for life. We thank you for peace. We thank you for your covenant. We thank you, my God, that no weapon formed against us has been permitted to prosper. We thank you for the Lamb of God, who is Jesus Christ, and we thank you that his blood and the ministry of his blood is activated over our lives right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that every sickness and every coronavirus and every virus floating around in the air is consumed by the fire of God right now in the name of Jesus. Now, just before I sign off, I just wanted to once again 
hammer home this point. We are people of faith, we are moving in faith, we have the covenant of God's protection. But that does not mean that we become foolhardy and that we just throw wisdom out of the window. We still move in wisdom. Like the children of Israel who had to cover their homes with the blood of Jesus and God very clearly instructed them to remain indoors. So there is an aspect of wisdom that is needed. Somebody says, oh, but doesn't that mean that, that, that you're in fear then if you have to apply wisdom? Not at all. When you leave your home, what do you do? You check the door, make sure you locked it. You check your windows. You know, if you park your car, you don't just leave your car open and go, go shopping. You, you, you make sure you put your alarm on, you make sure you lock the car, you even check it. And so you do that not because you're in fear, you do that because it's wisdom. You can't just leave your house open and your car open and say, well, because I'm under a covenant of protection, I don't need to lock my home, I don't need to lock my car. You still need to do your part because faith without works is dead. So your works have to be wise works. So what we're saying is make sure you are washing your hands, make sure you are using your hand sanitizer, make sure that unless you really have to go somewhere, you know, where there are masses of people, unless you, it's absolutely necessary, then for this period, and certainly until we have more information, it is best to, to make sure that you really, you and your family are safe at home, and you only make those public trips if absolutely necessary. We do this because it is wisdom. We know this is a very serious time, but we also know that we, the children of God, we're coming out of Egypt, we're coming into promise, we're coming into a season where the promised land is beckoning to us. So be encouraged, do not be in fear, be encouraged, be in the word of God, be in the promises of God, and I'll see you very soon. God bless you.